Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Good. All right, so we've already had dancing today, and we've had discussions about babies. And so I think maybe I'll change it up a little bit, and we'll talk about dogs. <laughs> On the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. This cartoon from 1993 is the all-time most reproduced cartoon from The New Yorker. It symbolizes internet privacy and the ability for users to send and receive messages in complete anonymity. Many of us wish for this privacy to be true, and for a long time it was. But now, 25 years later, Facebook knows I'm a dog. It knows my thoughts on doggy politics, all of my doggy friends, and my favorite doggy parks to frequent. Amazon knows my favorite dog food, all the treats and toys that I love, and through its Alexa device, it has a record of all my doggy barks and a very clear understanding of exactly how I spend my whole day. Mostly sleeping, of course. Equifax has an equally large trove of data online about me, gathered from a number of different sources. And all of these are used and put together to determine whether or not I qualify for a new doggy house. And as you may have guessed, we are no longer talking about dogs. So, how did we get here? How did we, the people, become we, the product, which companies mine data from in order to make money? If you study the history of the communications industry, this actually comes as no surprise. In his book, The Master Switch, Tim Wu, professor at Columbia University and policy advisor to the US FTC, talks about how communication industries, from the telephone to radio to newspapers and film, all started out like the internet. They started out with wide-eyed entrepreneurs, full of ideas, who were bringing new technologies to market. As they grew and matured, each of these industries came to be dominated by a handful of companies that hold the master switch. Similarly, when the internet started, it was slow, fringe, somewhat unusable, and highly distributed. But as it has grown and matured, it has become dominated by a few companies that hold the master switch. And these companies aren't just individually dominant. They do behave in some ways like a cartel. When was the last time you said, in front of your Alexa device, I could really use a vacation to Tahiti? How long was it before ads started popping up in your Facebook feed for best hotels in Tahiti? These companies are interconnected, and the thread that holds them all together is your data. And when they're not busy mining your data and selling it to others, they are cleaning up the mess that they have made from losing that data to hackers. My background is in internet security. I have worked with companies that are helping to clean up these deep and dark web databases, and I have seen what's out there on me personally. Assume that you are compromised. Assume that everything that you have shared online with anyone is not only being used by the companies that you've shared it with, but also being sold and also in the hands of hackers. So TEDx is not about scaring you. It's about inspiring. Where do we go from here? How do we get the internet that we deserve instead of the internet that we have today. Distributed ledger technology, all often lumped under the category of blockchain, aims to help take power out of the hands of the few and give it back and put it into the hands of the many. Those of you who may have heard of or may have even used Bitcoin may ask, isn't blockchain just Bitcoin? Yes and no. Bitcoin is a virtual currency, a cryptocurrency, 
And it takes advantage of blockchain technology and is useful as a good example of how it works. So Bitcoin has no central bank. There's no Federal Reserve and there's no monetary policy. There's nobody who decides if inflation is too low or too high or if the supply is too low or too high. There's nobody who decides interest rates. The supply and demand, the price of Bitcoin is based purely on supply and demand. Similarly, there is no centralized database or single entity that controls transactions that happen on the Bitcoin network. Instead, every transaction is recorded by a number of different computers, all of which make up the network. There is no middleman. Now, Bitcoin may not be the ideal use case for everyone. I, for one, do not like my currency to be so volatile. I want to know exactly what a dollar or a coin is going to buy me. But there are many other areas of my life where I would like to remove the middleman, and I would like the transparency and the visibility that blockchain and distributed ledger technology provides. So imagine a distributed social network like Facebook, except that when I connect with my friends, each of us uses a tiny bit of our computing power to host that data. We don't have to share that data with Facebook, and Facebook doesn't get to mine that data. Only you and your friends get to have access to that data. So unless they are data scientists, you shouldn't have an issue. There are a number of companies and entities that are trying out some of these models today. The Diaspora Foundation, you can visit them at diasporafoundation.org, is a distributed social network that runs across a group of computers. Diaspora's developers refuse to sell advertising or sell out to a larger company. Mastodon is a distributed microblogging platform like Twitter except that on Mastodon, every toot can be marked as public or private, and you can choose exactly who you share it with. Tune.fm is like a distributed Spotify. So artists have a direct connection to listeners, and they get to see how many times somebody has listened to a song. There is a distributed public ledger that shows exactly how many times songs have been listened to. The artist doesn't have to trust anyone. It's all publicly there on the ledger. In comparison, on Spotify, the artist must trust Spotify to tell them how many times their song has been heard and therefore how much they get paid. Credit bureaus are another area where this is emerging. So imagine instead of sharing all of your data with a single credit bureau that can be hacked, like Equifax, and I will apologize to any Equifax employees in the room, you can have a distributed credit bureau. Colendi is working with the, to serve the needs of the over three billion people who cannot get credit from traditional means. Colendi allows these users to share different types of data, like their cell phone usage, or their social networking profiles, to then qualify for things like peer-to-peer -peer loans and microfinancing and loan installment payments. And here, again, closer to home, Open Pharma, which is designed by Sertara, a division of Synchrogenics, is working to help bring transparency and visibility to the healthcare system. As a consumer, you generate a huge amount of data about your personal health care. Open Pharma allows you to decide exactly what information you share only with the providers and third parties that you want to share it with and only when you want to share it. Similarly, Open Pharma is working with the pharmaceutical supply chain, the FDA, pharmaceutical producers, and the pharmacies themselves to help communicate during times of drug shortage. These are all applications that require the secure sharing of data, but only with the parties that we want to share it with. 
not with a middleman. And that is the goal and the power of blockchain and distributed ledgers. So what can you walk away with today? Two things. One, a little harder to do and might take a little more time. And the second, very easy, and you can walk out of here and do it today. First, if there is an area of your life or of your work where you see a middleman, likely for no good reason, think about if there is an application or a concept that you can build on top of this technology to break down those silos and create visibility and transparency. And second, if you are tired of these companies using your data and of you being the product, then vote with your dollars and your time. Start to use things like the Brave browser, which has a search engine as well, and allows you to select which ads you view and to get paid in cryptocurrency for viewing those ads. Next time you start up a small group, perhaps start up that small social network on Minds or Diaspora and share that with your friends. As we get into the holiday season, think about giving your charitable contributions through something like BitGive, which works on top of distributed ledger technology and allows nonprofits to give that level of transparency and visibility to their donors about where their dollars are going. These are all conscious choices that we can make when we understand the visibility and transparency that blockchain and distributed ledgers can bring to our lives. Because at the end of the day, if I'm a dog, and you're going to know I'm a dog, I want to be a dog in control of my treats, my doghouse, and my life. Thank you.